The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the Association for Software Testing, its management, sponsors, or staff. We've got a couple of guests this time. I think this is a first for Cast Live in many ways because, one, we have two guests. Hooray! And, two, one of them is actually remote because we want to bring credibility to this panel discussion. We want to show that we know what we're talking about That's right. when we talk about remote. Our first guest, or second, it depends. I'm not going to rank them, is uh, Ben <laughs> Simo. <laughs> He's just the one across the table. <laughs> Ben Simo has uh, it works for Salesforce and works with me. He is a remote worker just like I am, and you've been working remote for full time remote for how long? Some number of months. It's mo- we're in months, <laughs> not years. <laughs> yes. Okay. But yes. prior to that, you did work a little bit remote, right? Yeah. Uh, the previous few years where I worked, it really didn't matter where I worked, so I'd be in the office sometimes and sometimes remote. And prior to that, spent a number of years working remotely, regularly, but mostly in the office. And we have Stephanie joining us via Skype, and she's right. going to come up. <gasps> there she it is. It worked. Right. There so she is. Stephanie Lou Barnes is a an old work colleague of mine. Uh, we met in 2004, and um, and worked together till like 2012 ish, I think. And uh, and she is an expert at this remote thing and has probably been doing the remote thing longer than any of us with what 10 years since you were in an office last Steph? yes 10 years all right so we're hoping to as a group to not only dispel some myths but also help others work with us remote folks. hey wait and i think you and i should talk about it too so steph's working on a fully distributed team right now sure. i am working mostly locally in an office um, i work remotely one or two days a week but I was full-time remote for over three years uh, with a team that was some some bits remote, but mostly a local team in an office. And I started, I've been working full-time remote for over a year now, and mm-hmm. I had no remote experience prior to this. In fact, I had some of these common myths stuck in my head <laughs> that now I'm ashamed that I had. Right. So, <laughs> so that's been my experience. Um, And I do work on a team right now that's a hybrid team. Um, All of the testers on the team are remote, but all of the developers are local. So, and that's been my makeup. So let's let's start with myths. Let's start with the fun one. Can I do the first one? Go ahead. Okay. So everybody says this to me when I talk about working remote. So like, do you get on calls and you're not wearing pants? I'm like, really? Like, no, I don't just roll out of bed and show up at work. In fact, most days I, uh, I, I've gone, I've dropped kids off at school and, and done any number of tasks in the hours before I start my day, just like many other people who go into offices. My office just happened to be in my house. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's probably pretty common. I don't know. Do you guys work in your pajamas? Anyone? Uh, I have yet to work in my pajamas. Uh, Ben, have you? I'm not wearing pants right now. (laughs) (laughs) For as much as anyone knows, at least. (laughs) Yes. Now, it it is true that I don't always wear shoes. That's Mm. true. But, um, yes, pants are always there and happening. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I think that a lot of people think that we do lounge around in PJs and we're eating bonbons and we're just hanging out all day. Yeah, the company ships me bonbons to my house, obviously. Doesn't that happen for you? I've even had people tell me that, that, that I don't shower, which isn't true either. They go, well, you don't shower or anything, right? Because you don't need to because you're not in the office. And I'm like, what? Because I have been Get uncomfortable all... real quick. Because, <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> you know, that, that showering is optional, I guess. I, I, I don't understand the no pants thing. So any other kind of misconceptions about apparel or hygiene that you've done? <laughs> 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 Remote working? Or is that pretty much no. the bulk of it? I think, I think we can get that one out of the way. I just, it comes up every time. So we talked, uh, a few of us talked before yeah. 
today about remote working, and one of the topics I threw out there. Well, wait, and wait. Let's talk. We also collaborated in a like a Google Doc that we all edited and commented and right. stuff too. This talk yeah. was done completely remote, completely and remote. I will extend this further <laughs> just so that everybody knows that the conference, this conference, was planned entirely remote. Mm-hmm. This broadcast is was planned entirely remote. And in fact, the, 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 the guy we've got doing the engineering, who's running the cameras today, he worked with us remote. Mm-hmm. So this is a completely remote thing that's happening. So anyone that says that there's l- kind of limits to what can be done via remote, to which I say, no way. Right. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that most anything could be done remote. <laughs> Right. Okay. Sorry. I totally cut you off. So yeah, that's okay. Get, get so to our next my myth. favorite topic and the favorite comment and myth is um, you can't do agile with remote teams. Now I've seen this on Twitter and I've heard people say it. So what say each of you? Oh, I, um, I feel pressure like this in my current job. So for the three years that I was fully remote, I was on an Agile Scrum team. I attended every stand-up remotely. I attended retros. I attended all all the planning meetings. Often I was the one sharing my screen and taking all the notes and fully participated, right? And now I'm on a team that everybody's doing Agile. They wanna have a physical board because it makes them feel really good about life. And, And it's a struggle because there is this pressure that you need to be in the office to be part of a conversation. And I don't think that that's at all true. And so I'm working very, very slowly to try and change those ideas because it's important to me to have my one or two days a week to be able to work from home. And, and so being that advocate to make the remote work be accepted and be a part of that culture, like we're getting there. We're making real progress. So, um, so that's my... I think it's really possible and I know it can be done. So that's kind of my piece on it. What's your take on it, Stephanie? I too have worked uh, remotely with two different agile teams very successfully. Um, And I agree with Dee, it's absolutely possible. And there are lots of tools out there that support it and make it very productive. Um, But I do believe it has to do with the team. You have to want to do it remotely and in sort of embrace that it's going to be done remotely. Um, Because yeah, if you're depending on a physical board sitting in an office, then no, it doesn't work. So um, I think, yes, it's absolutely possible, but you've got to set it up to be successful and everybody has to agree that they're willing to work in that way. Ben? And in my experience, the most agile teams that I have worked with have been geographically diverse teams. Uh, of, 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 of the top two there, uh, one was everybody worked in an office, but they were two different offices. Uh, and we worked as a team split across those two different geographical locations. And on another team, about a third of the people were working from home remotely. And uh, when you have a significant part of the team that is remote, the team learns to communicate in ways that they can effectively communicate and produce software with people remote. Uh, The times I've seen issues is when there's one remote person or there's an occasional remote person and the team is not accustomed to dealing with remote people. Uh, and they don't have the technology tools they need or people aren't prepared to communicate differently. And it's not that you can't communicate and work with people, even pair with people. uh, You just need to do it differently. Mm -hmm. And I I get a little frustrated sometimes because I'll I'll hear people say this, you, you know, you can't do agile remote and yet a good number of the team is IMing each other from their desks. (laughs) <laughs> and you know they're there's sometimes they're doing video conferences or voice chats or they don't want to attend meetings right and i'm i'm going that you're basically remote i mean let's be honest you're working in a you virtual work world in your already little silo where you don't talk to anybody <laughs> you know? and you know j- embrace what's really happening and i don't know if 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 you stephanie or you ben have experienced that at all where people just don't realize that they're actually working remote because they're in the building and that somehow makes it okay. 
Yes, and I've, I've seen some of that where people are either crowded, split across floors or my cases where we had offices in two different states and people working together or working with an offshore team. And they were working in ways remote uh, that those of us who are remote from home uh, also work, but they were working with people in the same who were in an office, sometimes even in the same building. Because mm-hmm. once they start making those tools part of their methods of mm-hmm. communication, uh, they're communicating with people in the office the same way they do with those that are remote. I, I do it all the time. I right. mean, I'll, I'll send a message to the person next to me just because I think it's less of an interruption than if I go up and, like, stand over them. If somebody's in the middle of a very complex thought, I want to be as non-obtrusive as possible. So, no, I'm not going to stand up and start waving my arms at them. If I just have a casual question, I'm just going to type it out. And pro tip, if you learn how to work remote, then you too can be remote. You can work from home. <laughs> and then it's a constant vacation, isn't that our which next Which leads into next? our next one, which is, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I've heard this before, and it ha- no one's ever said it was a constant vacation to no. me, but what they'll say is, I'll say, well, you know, I work remote, and they go, oh, must be nice. Right? It, you know, it must be great to just be home all day long. What's been uh, What's been your experience on that, Dee? Um, in some ways... Uh, You know, there's a convenience about it. Absolutely. Like, there's no getting around it. But at the same time, like, no, I I miss getting to be around people. I I want communication. And and the same part of it, too, like, I'm still working. Like, it's still my job. And being at home isn't really a vacation either. Like, it's not a a beach (laughs) or anything. But, uh, but yeah, like, ultimately, like, I still just have just as much work to do no matter where I'm located. It it doesn't, it doesn't change what I do with just the physical place of where I am. So Stephanie, constant vacation? Absolutely not. (laughs) (laughs) Stephanie's like, when do I get a vacation? (laughs) No, I agree with Dee. Like I'm, I'm still doing work and right. I'm at home, which the office is actually more fun a lot of times. Um, So, so yeah, no, I, I do work, whether no matter where I am, unless I happen to be at the beach. But I don't, I, I don't think I've ever gotten to work at the beach. So, so is okay. it, so is it like being in Tahiti, Ben? Working at the beach? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it like working at the beach? <laughs> I've not worked from the beach. I have worked from my back porch, looking at the pool. That's oh. close, maybe. <laughs> you, but even in the you office driving through the desert and picking up aliens right <laughs> yes yes but even at the office i might go work out on the patio right um, true so you know a lot of those things are the same it's just a different location i'm still having to to uh get both the, the good and bad things of people i have to interact with and work i have to do i'm just doing it from a different location mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i think that what ties into this a little bit is um the the misconception that you can do chores around the house right or you know play minesweeper or or basically i think the the, the i think the general idea is that you can do things while you're at home that you're not allowed to do in the office because you're just loafing around at home now i know and I can say for certain that that doesn't happen. You know, the chores don't happen during the day. No. I'm not loafing around at home. I'm not playing Minesweeper. I am working. Though, that doesn't change. Though on a rare occasion when I've planned ahead enough, I might put a meal in the crock pot to cook for dinner while I'm on my lunch break. Yes. In the cafeteria, which is also right. known as the kitchen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> kitchen, which is my constant <laughs> temptation because I don't keep food at the office. But when I'm at home, all I want to do is eat. What's been your experience, Ben? <laughs> so it's it's not uh, that I can do all these things that aren't work. But instead, what I find is not having a long commute and being far away makes those things that I would leave the office for easier to do Mm -hmm. and actually makes me more available for work because I don't have the extra extra travel time uh, for those things, whether uh, doctor's appointments or, uh, you know, some administrative something that we have to do during business hours. I find there's actually less of an interruption Mm -hmm. from work uh, because I'm at home and there's not extra travel to do those things. Right. Absolutely. Stephanie, what's your experience of doing chores while you're supposed to be working and playing Minesweeper? 
Yeah, I often find that it's like 2 p.m. and I haven't eaten lunch yet. So much less <laughs> done laundry or cleaning the house. So, yeah, I mean. So you haven't gone to the cafeteria yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. Like, it's really late. Like, if I was in the office, I probably would have seen someone else going to the cafeteria. Or maybe they would have brought me a sandwich. But if I'm home, it's just me. And it's 2 o'clock and I'm like, no wonder I'm starving and grumpy. Like, I'm going to go get some food. So, yeah, no, I don't. It doesn't happen. <laughs> in between meetings. and yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. Yeah, and, and and I've experienced that too. If I'm in the office, there will always be someone wandering around looking for people to go to lunch with them. Right. right. Which is kind of that reminder: it's lunchtime uh, versus <laughs> right. I work from home. And yeah, sometimes it is two o'clock or four o'clock or five o'clock, and I should be ending, and I've not had lunch yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times too. <laughs> um, uh, this one is actually a bit of an experience report from me is um, I had someone say to me not that long ago that it was easier to get information if you were if I was physically in the office so if I had the ability to walk around the building my search for the piece of information I was looking for would have been easier which wasn't true it just simply wasn't true in fact I just would have been more exhausted climbing stairs and walking around and finding (laughs) empty cubes and it was actually faster for me to get the information I needed because I could ping people really quick. They weren't there. They'll get back to me later. I can send the emails and I can go on to something else. Do you, what, what's your take on it? I don't know. I guess like the only chance that you might, I feel like find you have better luck if you're in the office is if maybe I'm asking you a question and you don't know the answer, but Ben's sitting over there and he happens to overhear it and he's like, oh, well, that alien over there has the answer, right? So there's that sense of like, you might get lucky on an overheard, but for the most part, no, you're going to ping people, you're going to send emails, you're, you're going to obtain the information the same way. Right, right. Ben? Yeah, even in the office, you know, my first or my first attempt at communicating people is often I am. Uh, mm-hmm. So whether I'm at home or at the beach, uh, which I've Are not you tried saying yet. it doesn't change? <laughs> <laughs> or at the <laughs> office, I, that's still going to be my first attempt to get someone. And yes. if they're not available there, there's email or I pick up the phone. These are all the same m- methods of communication that I've used whether I'm in the office or at home. Right. And I've seen some addressing of the overheards with some teams if you're working together on a project, create group IM chats mm-hmm. so nice. that you yeah. can ask the whole team and then someone can respond. Uh, so I find it's, it's whether I'm in the office or not, the communication methods are mostly the same. Okay. Mm-hmm. Stephanie? I would agree. Um, The one thing I would add, though, is in a previous job where I was one of the few remote employees, there might be one employee who happens to have a habit of roaming around the office, and then the only problem is you never know where said employee may be. So as a remote employee, like, if you were in the office, you might see him roaming about and be like, oh, there he is, I'm going to go grab him. Whereas, like, as a remote employee, despite your pinging, he will see it hours later when he finally makes it back to the thing pinging. Right. Um, But, you know, that's... That's a rare case, I think. But otherwise, yes, I mean, I can get all the information I need. But and that particular situation is more difficult. And even that can be overcome, right? If you have a trusted set of eyes in the room, right? right. It's like, <laughs> hey, I need this person. Can you just tell me where they are when they walk by? Can you, like, yes. throw a banana at their head? Like, yes. you know, like, I don't These know why really I a banana. <laughs> I'm hungry. There's banana flinging, apparently, where she works. <laughs> no, not I really. I don't have that at home. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why home is so peaceful. <laughs> a lot of banana flinging. <laughs> and speaking of home, the other, uh, another one that I get periodically mm-hmm. is, uh, oh, well, you work from home, so, you know, you could take care of your child while you're working from home. And I go, no, 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 no. I'm working. This isn't any different than whether I'm in an office or at home. It, it's not an excuse to do chores or take care of my children or child in my case. Mm-hmm. What's been your experiences on this? Full-time nanny. When I worked from home and my kids did, weren't in preschool, I had a full-time nanny who came to my house and took care of everything. Occasionally, I'd be on a call with a customer and like, I'd have a screaming kid in the background and they'd be like, oh, do you need to do something? I'm like, no. Completely taken care of. Like it, this is Sorted not my problem. People. Like 
I don't deal with this because honestly, one of the things I found was it was really hard on my relationship with my children to like, if I were trying to work, cause I did for a very short time work and care for my daughter at the same time. And it made it, I was a mess when I did it. I worked like 24 seven because I would kind of, whenever she was in, at, uh, taking a nap or something, I would work, but then I would take a break while she would eat and it would, you know, and then I'd work till like, midnight every night and get up at four in the morning to start again because I felt like I needed to keep working to prove myself because the quality of work I was able to do while she was there wasn't very good and then on top of it I just felt like I was the mom that yelled all the time or I parked my kid in front of the tv the whole time and it was like why isn't the glowing box entertaining you enough and and so then I feel more guilt as a parent because I can't engage with my child because I need to focus on work and then like it's just really unhealthy yeah it it was bad Stephanie uh same thing my kids are in full-time daycare and elementary school now with uh babysitters so yeah I mean I don't know anyone who's had kids can you do anything when the kids are around i mean much less work so no i absolutely not i can't i can't do that so yeah ben and when my children were young and i worked from home i had an office on a different floor that for the most part they weren't in uh you know and my wife would be home caring for them Mm -hmm. uh not me and i had Mm -hmm. to establish boundaries with the children of you know daddy's home but he's working if he's in the office and the door is closed Mm -hmm. and uh they quickly learned those those boundaries but trying to care for children and work uh is just as productive at home as it is bringing your children to the office and trying to work with them in your cubicle with you uh, which is not (laughs) very productive it doesn't work so well (laughs) now no now my son does occasionally watch video calls he he enjoys that quite a bit and that's kind of to be expected is he watching again tonight he might be watching oh my tonight. goodness he thinks this stuff's hilarious by I the love way it. <laughs> um and i i think the last myth we'll cover tonight real quickly mm-hmm. is um you can't maintain good relationships with your manager or colleagues if you're remote um i i don't know how to even really explain it beyond no not right. even close to true <laughs> Yes, you do have, to, as a remote person, you do spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time maintaining those relationships, you know, and I think we'll talk about this a little bit about in how to work with us as remote employees, mm-hmm. but you do have to put in the work. You, you can't assume that people are just going to traipse by because frankly, if they're traipsing by, I think they're trespassing at that point because they're <laughs> in my house, which I think would be kind of weird. Um, what, D, what's your take? <laughs> <Play on me. laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I think it, it takes uh, more uh, proactive communication, right? It's harder to get the water cooler talk, right? Mm, um, true. You, you need to seek it out. Uh, sometimes if I had a break between meetings or something and I knew that, you know, someone I wanted to talk to was going to be in the next meeting. So we were on the same schedule and there was like five minutes to go. I would just pick up the phone and call somebody just, you know, Hey, how's your day going? And it just ask little chit chatty sort of questions because, you know, when you're in the office, you're going to stop and have coffee with people. You're going to engage and there's going to be conversation that isn't always about work. And I think that that's okay. And that's part of your relationship. You talk about, life and stuff and those things that happen stephanie i I used to call stephanie a lot yeah a little bit (laughs) it's true we may have talked a few times yeah (laughs) yeah no absolutely i have had fantastic relationships with people that i have worked with so um including my manager i have managed others and had you know other peers and colleagues and um it's true you have to be thoughtful about the communication and it's not going to just happen to you um, but absolutely, you can have great communication and relationships that way. As a manager, like a remote manager dealing with people both in offices and people who are also remote, do you have any like advice or thoughts about that, Steph? Um, no, I mean, I, I think it really is just what you were saying a moment ago, Dee, and that's being thoughtful about the communication and not just about the meeting or the thing that just happened or what needs to go next, but that you actually just pick up the phone or you know start a hangout or something where you just say, hey, how are you? 
you know, how was that thing you did this weekend? Um, you know, and you actually build a relationship. That's what building a relationship is. It's not about the work stuff. And so I think you just have to be mindful to do those sorts of things. Um, and, you know, it can absolutely work. Ben, anything bad? Yeah, sometimes there seems to be, at least early on for me, uh, when I was working remote, this extra pressure to, I'm not in the office, I'm not seen, I need to prove that I'm all business when I'm not in the office. <laughs> right. there, you there, have pants there, on? There, there, yes, there, <laughs> therefore, all my interaction with colleagues in the office needs to be very specific about work or whatever tasks we're trying to accomplish. And I learned to realize that's not the way we interacted in the office. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to have that same interaction that we have when we're in the office. It may not be standing around the water cooler or sitting in the lunchroom or going out to lunch together. Uh, but it's okay to take that time to have the phone conversation, the IM, or we do a lot of video calls. Mm -hmm. uh, I get to see Ben almost every day. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a blessing <laughs> and, or a and, curse. And, and, and we do the combination of work doing work-related things for the tasks that are at hand, but there's also the personal conversation, which helps get to know people. And uh, I found that, that it's a necessary ingredient in a re work relationship to be productive with other people, uh, mm -hmm. to, is, is to know them personally to some extent. <laughs> Absolutely. So day in the life of a remote tester. Now, obviously, we all have a fairly short commute. We all know that. It's true. Right? That is one of the advantages of being remote. But I would say that day in the life for, for me as a remote employee isn't much different than the office. Um, I, I maintain office hours. I have meetings that I attend throughout the day. Um, I have work items that I need to be working on. And, um, you know, I also have the added kind of task of making sure I'm keeping my communication level way up. You know, I'm I'm accountable not for sitting in my chair, but rather what I get done. Yeah. I mean, that as a remote employee, I need to earn my worth like anyone else. Um, mm -hmm. What's been your experience? Um, well, so mostly, uh, you know, my my day kicks off currently a little bit differently. On the days I go to the office, I leave before my kids are awake because there's a babysitter at my house to make sure that they get up and get to school. So those days are really easy, right? And then the days I'm home, I'm actually the one who gets my kids up and, and gets them going and everything. And so then I have to get them to their location before I start my day. But other than that, like the work is the same. The communication is the same. I might need to like ping people a couple of times to remind them to include me in a meeting. Like, hey, wait, don't forget to dial me in. You know, um, that's more with the current team than with the, the teams I worked on previously where it was just part of the routine. You know, it was like, oh, we don't want to forget D, you know. Um, but yeah, it, less commute, that's good. Ben, Stephanie, let's start with Stephanie. Okay, uh, same thing. I have an absolute um, normal work day, normal work hours. Um, same thing, I am up early. I get my kids off to daycare and to school and I'm back and I work regular work days and I have meetings and do the things I would do in the office. But yes, it's just the, I mean, I would say my commute is shorter, but by the time I've taken the kids to school, I've been in the car for about an hour and a half. So it's not like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I haven't been Fair. somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, otherwise it's, uh, it's the same. Anything to add, Ben? Just the big thing is no commute. Yeah. When the commute is walking across the hallway, uh, it gives me either time if needed to start my day earlier mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. or it gives me the opportunity to, hey, I can actually run some errands in the morning before work starts, mm -hmm. you know, whether it is take a kid to school or run to the grocery store, things that it, before I just could not do because so much time was spent on the road. Right. I often work later the days that I work from home yes. because I don't mm -hmm. have to run out of the office to go catch a train in time to get back out to the suburbs before my son's school closes. And mm -hmm. I, I think I speak for all of us in that we also have fantastic chairs. I have a ball. <laughs> I sit on a yoga ball. <laughs> she bounces. When you're I do. <laughs> that is something unique about remote working is you have to have a but really look, good chair. But look, you can see Steph's comfy chair. Yes. <laughs> So communication styles. Yeah. Um, there, there's lots of modern communication styles. Um, let, let's go around and talk about our, our preferences in order. Um, for me, I'm, I'm a video first guy, right? Really? I like video. I like it to be in sync. I like it to actually work. Most or all the time would be fantastic. 
And I, what's more important to me, and this happens quite a bit, is when I'm having a video call with someone, and I actually had to tell all my teams this, I don't want you to screen share. I don't want to see the tickets going across. I don't want to see any of that stuff. I actually want to see people's faces, right? Because I can look at the tickets all I want because mm-hmm. I have a computer screen in front of me. Please don't screen share. I want to see faces. Um, after that, it's audio and phone, and it trickles down. I also use IM quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. I've held whole conversations via IM, which can work. It's not my preferred, but it can work. Yeah. Um, I depending it, it, it depends on the context. If it's a really short question, I'm going to go straight to IM. Um, I think that's easier. Um, beyond that... I think the thing that gets me, I really like the video calls. Um, my A lot of my developers actually don't have cameras. <gasps> they have desktop computers and they Buy don't cameras. have cameras. cameras. And so when I talk to them, I'm looking at their picture if they put one in the software. Oh, I hate the avatar. And then half of them don't actually have even have a picture to look at. So I'm just looking at this little like bubble thing. And I at least have a picture and I turn on my video because... I, I want to engage with people like I'm really here you know so that's my my beef about the video thing because I want to see people Ben yes I I like video uh, it, it especially if you start out remote I think it's an important mm-hmm. thing in recognizing people as fellow humans <laughs> and, and treating <laughs> them as such right. it's easy if someone's a email address uh, to not really give them the respect and the patience and whatever that we give someone we're working with face to face uh, but we can do that face to face with video uh, so I like video for that purpose uh, I'm also a huge fan of I am and it, mm-hmm. it's been well over 10 years that I am has kind of been my primary first thing and uh, that started at a job where we had everyone working in the office but we were split across two different offices uh, and I am really became the the uh, primary or the initial mechanism but then things can get lost in I am so it really does depend on the context so I am is great for that that pinging it'd be the look across the office or go step into someone's office those sorts of things mm-hmm. I'll do through I am mm-hmm. uh, if we need to find it later uh, email <laughs> Uh, but I do not really like email very much and I I, and I've worked in some orgs that uh, abuse email that absolutely everything is email any tool that is not email sends a copy of it to email and it reaches a point that is totally unmanageable Uh, so at least when I communicate with people personally I try to recognize you know if I do a quick IM and we can forget about it tomorrow and that's appropriate for what we're trying to communicate let's do that. Let's not clutter up someone's inbox. I think that's a great uh, from, point. From here to the next three years till they finally delete it. Uh, but, you know, communicate in a way that's appropriate for what's needed. Uh, screen shares. If you're pairing with someone working together, that's something I've done even before mm-hmm. the IM tools supported that. Uh, using remote access tools of one of us going into another's machine uh, with a phone call, <laughs> even before the, the uh, voice over IP worked well. <laughs> <laughs> Does it still work well? Yeah. Uh, By I, the I, way, if... I if, used if, to have a phone. It was awesome. Now I don't. If you want to know what uh, video or screen sharing tool is likely the most reliable, a remote person can usually tell you. <laughs> yes. True enough. <laughs> Stephanie, what's your experience been? Um, similarly, I think if I'm just paying somebody for a small question or even a larger question, it, it's usually instant message. Um, but, you know, like what I do appreciate, I, I love the video calls and I think anything that is more formal, a more formal gathering. So our daily standups or, um, you know, when we're really we're making a point to schedule ahead in a meeting about something. All of those are video calls, um, and I think those are really important. Um, but any of the more informal communication and chatter happens over I am. Cool. And I, I rarely use email. <laughs> right. So I think we could probably go all night on this, honestly. I don't know what um, you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're kind of passionate about remote Maybe. working. So I, I think as we wrap up here, let's, let's go a, at least one round, maybe two, with tips for people who are not remote that want to interact better with remote folks. And I think what I'll do is I'll kick things off with, um, and I'll give credit to, it's either Ben or Scott Barber 
came up with this tip, and it's it's an obvious one, and I don't know why I didn't think of it, which is we're here really just ping us. Um, what I found is most of the remote folks that I work with, when I ping them, I get an almost instant response. Mm-hmm. I have not necessarily found that to be true of people in the office. Um, so while we can't, we aren't seen or heard until you ping us, we're there. Yeah. Uh, um, I would say dial in for a call sometime, like attend a conference call with a big group of people and try, just try to follow the conversation. If you've never done it before, it's really amazing. Um, and, and there's like a billion little like conference call etiquette things that you'll start to think about between opening your lunch wrappers by the speaker Ugh. right the worst. or, or speaker people the like pounding oh my god dragging the speaker across the table it makes you cringe just thinking about it especially when you have headphones or on go- it's like <laughs> yes. all my uh, all my ears oh you're and, killing me. or like you know you get six conversations going on and, and you're like wait wait, wait who's talking Who, wait and <sighs> It's just, or or you got the one person who's like a million miles away and you can't ever hear a thing they say. And then you learn as the remote person, you have to be really proactive. I'm sorry, you need to speak up. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. You know, and you're just constantly educating people on how to make sure everyone on a call can hear. And it's really hard and you feel like a jerk after a while. So if you haven't done it, I would, I would strongly encourage you dial in for a conference call sometime stephanie a big one. um so so yeah the d's was a really big one and i do appreciate that one um i think the other one is just you know trying to be mindful that just because someone is remote it doesn't mean they're not there you know so if you're having an office uh, a conversation in the office where normally you would yell over or reach over to someone's cube and say hey what do you think about this do that just pick up the phone or you know i am them or start a video call like we all the time are like Hey, I'm starting to hang out, hop on, you know? And it's like, uh, okay. It's like, it's similar to asking somebody in. So just because they're out of sight, don't make them out of mind and, you know, really include, if if you mean to include them and you think it'd be useful, include them. Ben. Put good cameras and microphones in conference (laughs) rooms in the office. Yes. Yes. We no longer need expensive video teleconferencing systems. There's software someone can bring in their laptop and for a few hundred dollars you can put a great microphone and camera you know, in each of your conference rooms to make it easier for the remote people to see and hear what's going on. Yeah. And I'm going to throw two together because I think that we all think these are important which is... um, Consider using remote working tools for the entire team if you have greater than zero remote workers. Have your meetings via remote tools. Mm-hmm. Give up booking the meeting room. Just oh my gosh, go, yes. go to the virtual meeting room, stay at your desks, include everyone. If you've got one remote person, the entire team is remote, and do try working remotely. And not one day a week, not even two. Try working three straight days a week remote to get a sense for what a remote person experiences every day. Mm-hmm. And you'll feel some of these pain points and you'll be a lot more sensitive to right. it. Right. Like, so, so back on the meeting thing. So if you have to have that meeting in the meeting room because you got 10 people that are there and you're dialing in one. Or, or if you're all meeting in the same room, arrive early if you're presenting. Right. We all know that technology is a bit of a struggle. Right. How many times have you dialed in for a call and you wait? And you wait, and you wait. I'm the and only finally, one in here. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. the only one. You're like, okay, I've been here. It just took me a second to dial in. And now you're waiting five minutes for somebody to get their laptop plugged in and hooked up to the monitor. And, you're, and, and it's just, things would be very efficient, right, if, if you could do that. Any last tips or tricks from anyone? My other one would just be to, when you're, when you're scheduling or doing anything, just think about using online tools. Like if you're agile, don't put the board up on the wall. Like think of an online tool that you can use that just helps to um, make that communication and understanding of what's going on, you know, accessible to everybody. Good one. Right. And maybe make, make friends with your operations guys too. Right. Yes. For technical problems. Yes. And, And I would say when you're having those meetings where you have part of a team remote or an individual remote and everyone else in a conference room, Make the remote person the scribe or the remote mm-hmm. person the one updating your stories or your tickets and whatever your tools are. You know, screen share from the remote person and have them 
uh, you know, document or write down whatever's being done or whiteboard on their own whiteboard with the video camera on it. And mm -hmm. that helps ensure that the remote people can actually hear and understand what's going on in the room. That's awesome. That's a good one. That's a good one. Well, I think that wraps it. Um, Oh, I, I the couple of things before we go. Um, I always, always, always suggest this book, which is Remote, No Office Required. Um, if you want to learn more about remote, if you are a manager who's going to be managing someone remote, or if you're like me, you read this book because you're about to be remote, um, it's a good resource. It covers kind of the pain points. It talks about, you know, the magic of not being in person. So give it a look. Or even if you're just curious about remote work. Um, and um, I'm going to give Ben a minute here to explain. You'll notice that we have two aliens behind us. Um, ben has been taking remote to the extreme. So give us the short version of what you've been doing. Yeah, the, the short version is for the, for the past month, I've been working while wandering around the country. Uh, I've, I've uh, taken some days as vacation days, but most work days I am actually working uh, from wherever it is we happen to be. And those aliens we picked up in Roswell, New Mexico, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they've been along with us for our trip. And you know, we'll we'll go to a town, and if it's a day that I need to work, kind of our rule is we're not going to travel more than two hours to, you know, that day so that I can work. Uh, hotel internet can be awful, so it's required okay. some creative things. You know, find the local public library, find a local restaurant or pub that's got good internet that doesn't mind you sitting there all day. Uh, uh, or, you know, scheduling your relocation in the middle of the day in a way that you can do it quick and uh, get get back online and working. Uh, but it's it's been uh, quite an adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a little bit more than halfway through it right now we're going to continue this a bit uh, I had planned to blog it as we go but working and traveling and being a tourist is a little bit difficult uh, but there will be uh, things blogged at outofoffice.us in the near future and uh, also at that uh, URL you can see a little bit of uh, my commentary and history on my experience with remote working well excellent that's time uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Stephanie, for joining us virtually and remote. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Um, and uh, hopefully everyone got some good tips and tricks, and uh, remote working will become a lot more popular. We so, hope so. Thank you, everyone.